This man of God has spoken in several, several NACO conference and VCNAC conference. If I go a little more, I work for Delta Airlines and he's my platinum medallion. So he brings us a lot of business and keeps us flying. Thank you, sir. We take care of him too, that's why he's back. But it is an honor to have him. He's going to give, be giving our first message. He'll be flying into San Antonio. The General Assembly will start next week. For those who are here and able, please make sure that you go down there. At this time, I would like to acknowledge Dr. Tim Hill for his partnership with all Indian churches, especially with the NACOC conference. At this time, I would like to call on Pastor Joe Sanadika to come forward and honor Dr. Tim Hill with a moment of shall we all rise up, clap our hands, and greet our general overseer, Dr. Timothy Hill. Celebrate the goodness. 
goodness of the Lord there. But thank you for being here tonight. I was raised in Texas. I was born in Texas in 1959. To say you the trouble, I'm 62 years old. <laughs> 63 in December but I love Texas and any chance that I get to come back to Texas is a wonderful thrill for me I still have family in the Dallas Fort Worth area my mother is 94 years of age she lives with me though in Tennessee but uh, my mom and dad raised me in, in the western plains of Texas and then as a teenage boy we moved to the Dallas Fort Worth area so I know this area very very well I can tell you where the good barbecue is. I can tell you where the good Tex-Mex restaurants are. I can tell you where the best ice cream in the Metroplex is. And I'm on my pre-convention weight loss diet right now, so I probably won't have ice cream tonight. But I know where it's at if I wanted it. But more than anything, I can tell you where there are some wonderful, wonderful people of God that love the Lord all over this great state. Many of them are here tonight in this place, and I'm glad to see Texas friends here tonight. Well, I only have a few moments because I have to travel back to San Antonio, and uh, someone leaned over to me a moment ago and said, you must sing before you leave tonight. I think they want me to sing more than they want me to preach. <laughs> So let's take a vote. How many vote that I must sing? Let me see your hand. Okay. It takes a two-third majority. Oh, wait a minute. That's next week. I'm getting ready for the time. I'm sorry. I, I forgot where I was at. Ken and Karen Anderson, good to see my friends here tonight. I love these two people. They're precious. And I'm glad that they're here tonight. Can you make that sound as close to a grand piano as you possibly can? You've got so many buttons on there. So many levers. Oh, that's good. Thank you. I'm going to play it. Thank you. Thank you. Don't go far. Because if I mess up, I'll need you to help me. Now, I don't know that... Can I sing on this mic? All right. Will it fit? I don't know if that fits that. You think it does? Don't break it. All right. Come here. Stand right there. You, got one? Yeah. you just lost your job again. Here we go. Okay. There we go. Bring that up a little bit closer. Now, I always ask about these pianos because they have all these knobs you can turn and slides you can slide up and down and buttons you can put. You can make these sound like anything. What I'm about to tell you really happened to me. I was in a big convention one night, somewhere, I forget where, but a big convention, a lot of people. And I didn't ask any questions about the keyboard. I just went to it and was about to play it. I gave this beautiful introduction to a song I was about to sing. I mean, I told the people about the reason I had written the song. I told them what inspired the song. The people were crying tears when I got through talking about the song before I ever sang it. I set it up. It was going to be so good. And I touched the keyboard and it sounded like a Yamaha motorcycle. <laughs> I lost it. It was over. We just prayed and went home at that point. So anymore, I just ask, does it sound like a piano? And this one does, and I like this old piano. It's so sweet to trust in Jesus. Just to take Jesus. 
to speak in front of Caesar. And verse 1 of chapter 27, just in a few words, pretty well tells us his mission. It was determined that we should sail into Italy. And they delivered Paul and certain other prisoners unto one named Julius, a centurion of Augustus, his man. Skip all the way down to verse 8. Here's something that is very descriptive for me. I, I enjoy reading this verse because of its description. The process of time, they came unto a place which is called the Fair Havens. The Fair Havens. Skipping down to verse 13, over the process of their journey, the Bible says here, then when the south wind blew, when the south wind blew softly, supposing they had obtained their purpose, loosing thence, they sailed close by Crete. But long after there arose a tempestuous wind called Eurachlodon. Now another translation of this particular verse puts it this way. The weather changed abruptly. The weather changed abruptly. Paul, a man on a mission, boarded a ship with 275 others sailing toward Italy. Out into the depths of the water and sometimes something close to the shore, they sailed even until they came to a place called Fair Havens. Now Bible scholars and theologians can tell you where Fair Havens was precisely, but wherever it was, it just sounds like the kind of place I'd like to go. I mean, any place named Fair Havens sounds like a good place. And can I tell you, the church for a long time has been in Fair Havens. God has blessed us. Even with all that we've had to endure through our history and all the various challenges that come in our lives and come upon the church, I think we can basically say, at least in this last modern century, we pretty well sailed through fair havens. The favor of God. The blessings of God. For the church of God, we have grown now to 186 nations, 7.4 million members, plus Ed Harris. Did you know that it is likely that the church of God is ministering to about 15 million people that call the church of God their home? Fair havens. Churches are being planted in exponential numbers every day. Fair havens. Souls are being saved to the degree that I can't even number fair havens. But then, in 2020, the weather changed abruptly. In Paul's case, they came through a storm known as the Eurachlodon. Now, the Eurachlodon was simply a typhoon with hurricane force winds. And suddenly the balmy breezes became a tempestuous wind and it got so bad that for over two weeks the people on that vessel didn't see the moon, they didn't see the stars, they didn't see the sun during the day. It was a horrible experience for two weeks to the point they thought they were going to lose their lives and they experienced what I call the brunt of the storm. Brothers and sisters, I want to tell you, we have experienced the brunt of the storm. I understand the pandemic, I understand the science, I understand the medical, I understand everything about it. It's very serious and we have taken it very seriously. People have been sick, people have died, and people are still sick, and people are still dying in some places. But I believe someday when the veil is pulled back on all of this, 
someone will have to admit Satan desired to take out the church during this pandemic. He intended to silence us, shut us up, and shut us down through the brunt of the storm. And all of the heartache and all of the tears and all of the sorrow and all of the sadness, the church was challenged like never before. And in many locations, we were totally shut down for many weeks, many months, and even some right now are still just easing back in to having worship services in person because we have faced the brunt of the storm. But I'm going to tell you tonight, if the devil thought he would shut us up and shut us down, he was dead wrong. Amen. Because you found more ways to preach more gospel to more people than at any other time. Amen. Not too long ago, I asked my staff to give me a report. I said, go and look at the numbers and tell me the difference between 2019 and 2020. 2019 was an incredible year for the church of God. We planted more churches around the world, saw more people saved seemingly than many years before that. And they came back and gave me a report and I braced myself. I was ready to hear them say, it's bad, Bishop. We are having a hard and a difficult time. I was ready to hear them say that because of the pandemic. But here's what they said to me, Brother Anderson. They said, Bishop, you might want to know that in 2020, we saw 35,000 more people give their heart to Jesus than in 2019. Even in the brunt of the storm, Jesus is still saving souls. Even in the brunt of the storm, Jesus is still sending revival by the power of the Holy Ghost. Somebody said, how do you explain that? I don't have to explain it. Jesus himself explained it when he said, upon this rock, I'll build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I've never been more proud of Church of God pastors than I am right now tonight because you found a way to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ even in the brunt of the storm. But the storm was so severe that the ship was battered. Paul experienced the brunt of the storm, but now he's about to experience the battering of the ship. Now, an angel of the Lord had stood by the Apostle Paul earlier in this process, and he said, Paul, do your best to get them not to lift anchor. Because if they lift anchor, the boat is going to come to disaster. They're going to lose their ship. But here's the word, Paul, if they will stay with the boat. Even if the boat falls apart between them and the best thing that they can do is grab onto a piece of lumber or a plank of the ship and float to shore. Whatever you do, tell them to stay with the boat and nobody will lose their life. When men begin to jump overboard or at least try to, Paul stood up and he said, Men and brethren, you should have listened to me and hearkened unto my voice and not loose from creep. I told you this was going to happen, but since you didn't listen to me then, please listen to me now. Whatever you do, stay with the ship, stay with the boat, even if we have to float to the shoreline that I see out in the distance on broken pieces of the ship. Wrap your arms around the ship and sail to the shoreline because God said, Whoever stays with the boat shall be saved. Can I preach right there just a minute? This old ship of Zion called the church of the living God. We've had our storms. We've gone through our Eurocladon winds. We've had our tempestuous hurricane force winds. There have been times when the ship would seem to shake and be battered on every side. But I made up my mind a long time ago that Jesus meant it when he said he would secure the church and he would keep the church firmly in the palm of his hands. And I made up my mind that I'm going to stay with the ship. It may not be everything I want it to be. It may not do everything I want it to do. But I made up my mind I'm going to wrap my arms around the doctrine of the church. I'm going to wrap my around the worship of the church. I'm going to wrap my arms around the preaching and the praying of the church. And I'm going to stay with the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Even though we experience the brunt of the storm, even though we experience the battering of the ship, God said, I am with you in these treacherous, difficult times. Hallelujah. But let me go into chapter 28 as I continue to work out this thought that I have here. The Bible says that when the ship began to fall to pieces, they found themselves in a place where two oceans came together. Oh my goodness. 
where two currents collided. Can I tell you that's where we find ourselves tonight? We find ourselves in a place tonight like we have never been before in all of our history. The church is right in the midst of colliding currents where culture is colliding with reckless, damnable doctrines of this world. And we find ourselves trying to navigate through a godless culture and a compromising church where damnable, reckless doctrines are being thrown at us all the time. It's amazing to me what people are preaching today. It's amazing to me the diluting of faith that I'm hearing today. It's amazing to me how people are taking the name of Jesus and they're bringing it down to the level of men instead of lifting him up as a thrice holy God that he is. Oh, let me tell you something tonight. When Isaiah saw the Lord in the throne room of King Uzziah, he said, when I beheld him, when I saw him, he was high and lifted up and his train fills the temple. Can I tell you, he's still high and lifted up tonight. And his train still fills the temple tonight. Isaiah said he was so holy and his glory was so, so powerful that the posts around the door, the, the doorposts begin to shake and to move because of the compactness of the glory of God. I want to tell you this convention hall tonight, I sense the glory of God moving in this place because you determined that you would lift up the name of Jesus as high and as holy as it is. You said you will lift up the name of Jesus in this convention. We find ourselves between the colliding currents of culture and a compromising world and doctrine that's being thrown at us from every direction. And that's when the ship fell apart. And men grabbed hold of broken pieces of lumber and they sailed to the shore. We pick up in chapter 28, a few verses here. The Bible said, when they were escaped, they knew that the island they had come to was called Malita or Malta. By the way, the name Malta means refuge. Can I tell you tonight, there's refuge in the time of storm. Hallelujah. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost here now. Hallelujah. Refuge. Look at verse number two. The barbarous people showed us no little kindness. For they kindled a fire and received us every one because of the present rain and because of the cold. And when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks, he laid them on the fire and there came out a viper out of the heat and fastened onto his hand. And when the barbarians saw that the venomous beast hang on his hand, they said among themselves, no doubt this man is a murderer whom though he had escaped the sea, vengeance does not allow him to live. But Paul shook off the viper into the heat, back into the fire, and he felt no harm. Here's what the Lord's been saying to me about the church. And I'm going to close quickly. We have come through the brunt of the storm. We have experienced the battering of the ship. But it's as if Satan says, you might survive the brunt of the storm and you might survive the battering of the ship, but you won't survive the bite of the snake. Come on now. And the Apostle Paul determined that while he appreciated the fire that had been built, it was not an effective fire. The native people, the barbarians as they were called in this story, they showed great hospitality and they built a fire to warn the people that had escaped the sea. But Paul, after a little while, determined that is a mediocre fire. It is not an effective fire. I'm still cold. And I'm still wet. Somebody needs to increase the flame. I'm going to preach before I get finished here tonight. I want to tell you, Church of God, as you celebrate your 25th anniversary, 
furniture in this great convention. Somebody needs to increase the flame. We've got flames flickering here and there. We've got fires burning here and there. But I want to tell you in 2022, these fires need to be hotter than they are. These flames need to reach higher than they reach. These fires need to be more productive than they are because there are people that are still cold. There are people that are still weather beaten. There are people that have still come through the storm and they're looking for help. And the mediocre fire that's on the shorelines of our churches is not getting the job done. Somebody needs to increase the flame. Oh, help me preach here, somebody. Paul said, if I get involved, I can make that fire hotter. If I won't just step back and just twiddle my thumbs and, and just hope for the best, but if I get involved, I can do something to make that fire more effective. Oh, God, help us get involved tonight. So the Bible said Paul began to pick up sticks and wood so that he could increase the flame. And there's a couple of explanations for what happens. One is more likely than the other. One explanation is that Paul picked up one bundle. He picked up a scoop, if you will, of sticks or wood. And in that bundle, there was a snake there hidden. I think that's the least likely of the scenarios. I think Paul would have seen that. I think he would have noticed that. What I believe happened was that Paul picked up the wood one piece of lumber at a time, one stick at a time, and he's putting them in his arms. And when he gathers a full load, he goes and he drops it into the flame that's already been created. And when he increases the heat, a snake that had been cozy, coiled, and cuddled up, and never been bothered before, suddenly is brought out Amen. by the increased flame and the increased heat. It's amazing to me how many old snakes there are in the church. Oh, y'all don't want me to preach. Y'all want me to go back to San Antonio. No, I'm feeling it now. I'm going to preach a while. So she'll tell me when it's time to go to the airport. I can't miss that flight. It's amazing how many old vipers are lying beneath the ashes and the embers of mediocre flame. Wow. And they've never been noticed before because the fire has never been hot enough before to bring them out. Amen. But when somebody says, I'm going to pray like I've never prayed, and I'm going to fast like I've never fasted, and I'm going to get committed to the Word of God like I've never read it before, and I'm going to witness, and I'm going to do my part to bring a revival in this church, when somebody gets serious about adding fuel to the fire, I promise you some old snakes that have never bothered us before somehow and start firing at the church. I'm just going to tell you how I feel. I've dealt with more old sex lately than I have anything else. I'm not depressed by that. I'm actually encouraged by that. Because what that tells me is that somebody's praying, somebody's drawing close to God, the fire's getting hotter, the church of God is about to experience its greatest revival. This old snake got stirred up and lunged out of that fire and latched on to Paul's hand. That hand represented fivefold ministry. The ministry of the apostle, the prophet, the pastor, the evangelist, the teacher. Can I tell you this pandemic was after ministry? <laughs> The vipers and the snakes that are coming against us right now. They don't care if we sing all night. They don't care if we preach all night. They don't care if we speak in tongues all night. But what these snakes are concerned about is if we start doing active ministry through the fivefold gifts that God has given to the body of Christ. My Lord, I feel like preaching more than I do anything else right now. When the prophet starts prophesying, when the apostle starts giving apostolic leadership, when the pastor starts bringing his church in tune with the Holy Spirit, when the evangelist starts evangelizing, when the teacher starts teaching, that's when the snakes get disturbed and start lunging out of the fire, and they let go to Paul's hand. But it's significant to me that Paul didn't just stand there and look at it. They thought he 
was going to swell up. They thought he was going to fall down. They thought he was going to die. I want to tell you, this world is expecting us to swell up with poison. This world is expecting us to fall over dead because they want our voice gone. They want our impact dead. They want our influence silenced. So the world has bitten us in the, in the hand of ministry, expecting us to swell up and become immobile, expecting us to become unable to be used of God and just fall over dead. But I'm impressed by the fact that Paul didn't leave that snake hanging there and go around and show it everybody. Look at what bit me. Look at what bit me. Did you see what that church did to me? Did you see what that pastor did to me? Did you see what that last administrative board did to me? No. Paul didn't just leave it hanging there. The Bible said he went back to the very fire that brought it out. The fire that exposed it is the fire that's going to do away with it. And the Bible said Paul shook it off into the fire and he felt no harm. Here's my message before I go catch my plane tonight.
degrees in this house. Just remain standing. I've got to stop here. If I'd have had a sermon, we'd have been here all night long. Paul shook it off into the fire. The next thing you see is Paul, no doubt, using that same hand. When he walked into the house of a sick man, burning with fever, dying. Paul lays that hand that had been attacked, but now full of the power of God on the sick. And the sick recovers and is healed by the name of Jesus. Paul was a man on mission. We are a church on mission. Would you reach over and just lay your hand on someone's shoulder beside you right now? I want to pray for you, Father, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, lay your hand upon the people of God. discouraged right now and lift them up in their most holy faith. Establish them. Establish their going. Touch them, my Father, I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray, Lord, for an outpouring of the Holy Ghost on this fellowship of churches. I pray for an outpouring of the Holy Spirit on this fellowship of brothers and sisters that they will be used of God in a marvelous way in this coming year. As this sickness and this pandemic is put firmly behind us, we will rise up in the power of the Holy Ghost and we will be the church that God has called us to be and we will do what you have called us to do. In Jesus' name. Now I must leave and go to San Antonio over before I leave. Yeah, give it praise. Give the Lord praise. Before I leave, here's what I want you to do. I want you to pray for the Church of God General Assembly. I want you to ask God to meet with us next week. We need divine intervention of the Holy Ghost. Would you lift your hands and pray with me, Father? I've asked my brothers and my sisters to pray for the General Assembly. I join with them with my faith. I join with them with my hope. I join with them with my trust. Asking you to show up in San Antonio. You've already heard our prayer, Lord. You've already gone before us and you've prepared the way. You've made the way straight. Caleb, you have made the way straight, Lord. And we ask you for your divine favor, your leading and guidance. In Jesus' name. Do one more thing for me. I want you to look at somebody, tap them on the shoulder and say, He preached to you tonight. Tell them that. I love you. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Tim. Can we give a big hand? This man of God. We are truly blessed. We are truly blessed. Thank you so much. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. What a wonderful word for the day. Amen. Shake it off. Amen. Finally, we culminated into that true message when we came in. And we are moving out from here with a new energy. Amen. Many things that were hidden will come. 
will be, you know, you will see that when the real fire comes in. Right? Praise God. So, Dr. Tim Hill, he is, he, he is leaving and, uh, you know, one of the important things is that just keep the whole thing in prayers as we promised to pray for the whole General Assembly. There's so many things that's going on. Let's keep the matters in prayer. And also, as church, we should be concerned about what is happening all around. Many organizations are falling apart from the faith and the true doctrines. Pray that. Let the church of God stay in the doctrine, in the truth, in the holiness. And up till now, what we found as most precious, we want to hold it on for that. Amen. Can I get a good amen for that? All right. Praise God. So this evening, one more time, just anybody and everybody who have joined us a little late, we just want to welcome you all. Thank you so much for being in this place. We have a few uh, uh, special guests with us uh, who would like to bring their greetings to us. And uh, uh, we have the privilege to have Reverend P.C. Jacob, who is uh, president of IPC Family Conference that is happen, that's going to happen right after two weeks for 2022. So he's with us. He will be bringing his greetings and would like to also, he will be bringing his invitation to And right after him, we have Reverend Fini Alumutu, who is the national convener of 39th PC and AK. PC, PC that. Uh, for 2024, they both will be bringing greetings. Let's give a warm welcome to both of these. Thank you, Pastor Shiva Thomas, for that wonderful introduction. What an awesome presence of God this evening with us. In the Ratri number of the Lord of the Eva Sani Tetanai, Nan Deva Tristudigan. Parishutatma, Sushi or Charitra made the Totagumbo. Ibragara Mabarina, Adi Deva, Agashu, Bumi Sushitu. Bumi Pinum Shunyu Maikadano, Adatin Mide, Eder of the Idano, Deva Tede Atma, Velatin Mide, Parivati Chuadil. Randa Gariam Parishutatma Vode or Pikino, Adil, Deva, Agasu, Bumium Sistich. At the Yavasan Parayano, Atma Velatin Mide, Parivati Chuadilno, it is a Nadaki Kadaka the Karima, Parum, Shunyu Mai Kadaka the Yavasa. Namakaria, he pandemic situation, he did Yoka Nadivil, he wear the Yoda Nadivil, he over the Nadivil, he feel the Yoda Nadivil, other than Munka Kadakuno, Adil, Deva Mundayano, other Kadaka. Parishu The only reason that I came here 
here is to invite you. Look at your beautiful face and personally invite you all to Oklahoma on August 4 to 7. August 4 to 7. Family conference like yen da support thengala ya ningale oru oru thayum. Ivada karanu vanda invite jeevana yen karanu vandi kida da. Normal embassy total daana sathen to oru less than three hours you can get there. Oru archa visrama mudathaycha. Arthay archil ningale lello oru okrava mail karanu vanna nam. Avada namu kori vichigada. Conference the team ay na mudathiri kida da. Vision without boundaries. Adhiri ko nilla tha devi ka darshanam. Nama the chayi na the moonu devasthengal in adhita devasam vishuthiye kuri chola devi ka darshanam. Ganda matte devasam missione kuri chola niyogatte kuri chola devi ka darshanam. Vishuthi prabhi cha devi janam arya na suvisesha vele ka yaranu ab avre yathi na yori ko suvisesha vele ke karan do bhogna rotta kari thuni vendiya or nitya na namu kunda an nitya de ke vendi. Nyalarca, jenatte uriki, Yesus Rusi, apa sahaja pikiran yang anda lakukan di sini, anda boleh dengan anda orang orang itu cerdik, prati juga, yang anda kau ini prati juga, kadang tu benda conference itu, anda, anda tu, hati anda boleh touch, ya cerdik tu benda yang itu di mana kita, di conference itu. Rasanya kita akan ada beberapa keynote speaker will be Dr. Paul Matthews from Udayapur and Pastor Sam Stroms and Pastor J J Pikes. Aduh boleh tanya kat sana ada session mana? Ia dewa dasar mana? Pastor Shibu Thomas, Pastor Sambo Wargis, Pastor Jacob Matthew, Pastor A B Peter, Pastor Wilson Worki, Pastor Wilson Abraham, Pastor Sam Jor. Ini 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 long list. Abah itu dewa pada nafsu suruh sih kita naik. Ninggal itu lebih mana ya? Pastor TV Thomas, I am meeting with you with the Sushikyu. Without wasting your time, let me from the bottom of my heart, let me invite all of you to Oklahoma. Oklahoma is Karthavu Varivan Thomas. August 9, Karthavu Vandil. Let us see in Oklahoma. May God bless you. Samayi Tata Devi Dasar Marika. In the Nandi Yari Ichi Kula Edu Valkwad. Thank you so much before uh, uh, Pastor Fini comes in. Uh, let me call Reverend R.K. Diggle, uh, who is a missionary from Odisha. If you also can come in, please join in here. Diggle Sahab, Abdira Samiyangi, thank you so much. Praise the Lord. Kata Bhai Yesu Kursu Bhugandaram, Inatriyana Vakitiyana Nadeemathana Stotaram. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Jadi kita pernah mesum saya juga ada IPC Family Conference kan? Kita PC pas PC jadi kita orang orang pada jadu orang eh, pada jadu pertama ayu, pertama ayu, apda bahagia ayu ni bisi dia kan? Nalui orang entah macam ni, rata rata orang mana? Ada yang ni rasa rasa kalau dia arti ada yang lebih mana kalau? Praise the Lord. Eh, silver juga dia agak sih kan? Ayah, nak kau ke? Tanda ini tiada betul nak. Usaha nak nak kenal IP sih nak kira. Periode orang yang lain asam suri yang lain. Praise the Lord. Kata awak ni budi cah. Kata awak itu adalah kamu sih cah. Tanda ini tiada betul nak. Juli ini masa mana yang di dibuat? Yang mana yang di dibuat? Usaha orang orang yang jor ka brown kanunsa sendal. Bisakah kita dalam sembilan bulan atau dua hari agi ini sih, atau orang pada ini juga Maya kerugian orang orang macam ini turun lagi. Adanya ini beri ibu sendiri dengan adit tak pernah Maya dana sendiri. Sasau kau ni terus hidup maga sembilan bulan berikut bor. Adanya ini, yang kita kawal sendiri dengan Maya. Ini adalah nasional kanwin ada pas jossa ini kita vice president dan pas sendiri dalam perlom secretary pastor Abraham Thomas and Trisha. Wilson Waris, ini meeting rancu sahaja kita dalam dasar itu. Kalau tuan dengan kita semua orang itu, anda semua yang bandar ini, saya ni terma terlebih kian. Ini ustana mana barang yang ada Texas ini ada orang dah. Ini Texas ini na, ada tu orang yang macam si Phil itu dari kita dengan orang ini. Dah ada seorang orang dewa makhluk, ni ada orang yang cari untuk cari cari kian. Texas ini ada kita dah. Ustar pelajaran itu ada orang kita. Yang kita dengan ada dah ada seorang orang dewa makhluk. Saya nak lihat cerita ni. Demokrat ada tu konferensi mana? 
വിശദമായി പറയാം എന്നുള്ളത് കൊണ്ട് ഞാൻ എൻ്റെ വാക്കിനെ ചുരുക്കട്ടെ ഇവിടെ പ്രാർത്ഥിക്കുന്ന അനേക രൂപങ്ങളെ ഞാൻ വെളിയിൽ വെച്ച് പരിചയപ്പെടുകയാണ് ഏറ്റവും എല്ലാവരുടെയും പ്രാർത്ഥന മുപ്പത്തി എട്ടാമത് കോൺഫറൻസ് ഫിലോസഫിയാൽ നടക്കുന്നു ആ കോൺഫറൻസിന് അനുഗ്രഹത്തിനും മുപ്പത്തി ഒൻപാ ഒൻപതാമത് ഹൂസ്റ്റൺ പട്ടണം മറന്നു പോയത് ഹൂസ്റ്റൺ എന്ന് പറഞ്ഞ പേരായിരുന്നു അവിടെ പേര് എവിടെ കോൺഫറൻസ് ചോദിച്ചാൽ എവിടെയാണെന്ന് ചോദിച്ചാൽ എനിക്ക് അറിയാൻ പോയെന്ന് ആരും പറയരുത് അടുത്തത് ഫിലോസഫിയ അത് കഴിഞ്ഞാൽ ഹൂസ്റ്റൺ എല്ലാവരും ഓർക്കത്തക്ക ഓർക്കണം നിങ്ങളുടെ എല്ലാവരുടെ പ്രാർത്ഥന എല്ലാവരുടെ പ്രാർത്ഥനയാണ് അത്യാവശ്യമായിരിക്കുന്നത് എല്ലാവരും അതിൻ്റെ അനുഗ്രഹത്തിന് വേണ്ടി ദൈവജനം കർത്താവിന്റെ വരവിനോട് ഒരുങ്ങുവാനായി നമ്മൾ കോൺഫറൻസ് നടത്തിയാലും പി സി നാക്കി നടത്തിയാലും ഏതെല്ലാം കോൺഫറൻസ് നടത്തിയാലും നമുക്ക് അതിൻ്റെ എല്ലാ ലക്ഷ്യം കർത്താവിന് വരവിന് വേണ്ടി നമ്മളെ ഒരുക്കുക എന്നുള്ളതാണ് അതിനുവേണ്ടിയുള്ള ഒരുക്കത്തിന് വേണ്ടി നിങ്ങളെല്ലാവരും പ്രാർത്ഥിക്കുകയും പിന്നെ പ്രാർത്ഥിച്ചാൽ മാത്രം പോര നിങ്ങളെല്ലാവരും കടന്നു വരികയോടെ ചെയ്യണം അതിപ്പോഴേ ഒരു ക്രമീകരണം എല്ലാവരും ചെയ്യണമെന്ന് ഓർപ്പിക്കുന്നു കർത്താവ് എല്ലാവരെയും അധികമായി അനുഗ്രഹിക്കുമാറാകട്ടെ such a wonderful moment in the presence of the lord uh, i bless the name of jesus christ because of this wonderful opportunity the north american church of god they have given me the chance to start here for a few minutes uh, i thank god for the 2010 conference in atlanta i attended that and uh, never in time we met the lover of food is a state because of uh, his invitation and uh, his concern i came to atlanta and had a wonderful time three days and had a chance to speak also and again after 12 years this is my privilege to come to uh, dallas texas and last time when i came i stayed there about seven to ten days uh, with uh, pastor sotis and uh, i just praise god for the wonderful love affection and the unity in the church last uh, many years we are in the ministry from eight to one specifically church planting ministry i was in operation mobilization in india in 73 74 75 in bottom of my heart the desire to reach our people and we have a village ministry 80% of the population in india more than 80% population of india is villages if we really want to reach india we have to reach the villages and 41 years of my life I spend in the deep of the forest and jungle though I am traveling here and there but my local vision is village vision so my dear friends we have a small work going on in Odisha state even five districts in the border of Andhra Pradesh like Srikakulam Vijayanagaram Visakhapatnam and the five districts of Odisha state we have a hospital project the mission hospital what we are renovating now it's a 83 years old hospital with 150 bed and it is closed i was born in the hospital my mommy took nursing training in that hospital and she died there my daddy also died there my grandfather died so we have emotional touch pastor benjamin from uh, new york city he came to visit us he stayed about seven days with us visited all our jungle field and we have a children home and i am from the place where 2008 the prosecution came august 25th night my house was blasted out and i was they were driven from my home taken every everything myself and my wife we were in the jungle for about 5 to 6 days and then some uh, non christian friends came and they again uh, escort up to andhra pradesh and there i stayed about 99 years and in 2007 my wife died so now i am staying in bhuvneswar uh, reaching the people our utmost goal to reach the people elements we have prepared a common platform what we see in state of orissa the organizational structures are coming to collapse real work of the evangelism with the mighty strength and the gifts and the fruits of the holy spirit that will only reach you and thank god for the man of god who preached us today and he he spoke so such a wonderful things and everybody myself especially i benefited with the apostle who spoke us today Thank you my dear friends last word i want to tell you that is for me and that for the leaders those are sitting here i honor you respect you you are most wonderfully and fearfully lord made you and made he made me lord says in psalm chapter 50 and verse 5 gather my saints unto me together those who made a sacrifice 
Those who made a covenant with a sacrifice. We need sacrifice to reach the people. That is